Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you, and it is new pack day! We have a ton of new updates to uh, the shop, as well as solo mode, so we're going to be checking those out today. I'll be going over the new packs in the shop, um, and talking about my feelings on them. Uh, as I said before, I'm not sure how many packs from the, uh, the new packs I'm going to open here, but... Uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what all is in them. First, we're going to go up to notifications here, see what kind of notices we got, because there are quite a few. Uh, notice of a Duelist Cup, we did get wind of this uh, last season, so there is going to be a Duelist Cup. I believe it starts in next week, um, and yeah, it's to kick off the 2025 uh, WCQ season there. All right, got some new accessories in the shop as well. Uh, Ancient Gear Advance as well as Final Gesture. Those are actually both pretty cool wallpapers. I'm probably going to get this one. Oh, sick! There's a new board. Oh, it's a Trap Tricks board. That's interesting. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to be picking that up. Ragnarika gets sleeves as well as an icon. Icon actually doesn't look too bad. I actually like this round of accessories. I think they did a pretty solid job with those. So, got two secret packs. We will be opening up those at the very least, our, our free secret packs. Uh, one for Runic and Generator, which makes sense because lore-wise they're actually both connected as well. Adventure of Mystical Etchings. Uh, and then a new secret pack, Replace the World with Joy, which is going to finally give Monadium its own secret pack. Very much been a long time coming. Uh, now finally alongside Tier Limit and Cash and... Uh, does Scareclaw have a secret pack? It better. If Scareclaw is the only uh, Vizes deck that doesn't have a secret pack, that's... Uh, that's, that's pretty sad. <laughs> so, cards included in the pack shot through fiction. Ah, they put a bunch of, uh, <laughs> that's actually really funny. They put Mirror Force and Magic Cylinder in the, uh, the Boral pack, the Rocket pack, because that's, of course, uh, um, well, shit, I can't think of the guy's name. Um, Revolver. Yeah, those were his cards, so... All right, um, what else do we have here? Selection packs. Okay, so these are going to be the new ones. We're going to take a look at the list for these uh, here in a moment. Of course, the main new pack here is going to be Advance of the Great Forces. We did already briefly talk about these five URs. Um, to kind of summarize that portion of that video, uh, I'm honestly not the most impressed uh, with these cards. Um, but again, we'll look over the whole card list and see what all we got for URs and, and how good I think this pack is. There is also this reprint pack, Aim for the Stars, which I am quite curious about because I don't own um, plant stuff and I don't own transaction rollbacks, so this might actually be something I pull from here. We'll have to see here. And it looks like we have a new solo mode as well for uh, Ally of Justice. So that's pretty cool to get 200 more gems and learn a little bit more dual terminal lore there. So. That's yeah, gonna be over here in solo. I'm not gonna do the solo mode. I'm just getting rid of the uh, the notification here. But yeah, it's gonna be under Terminal World, wherever that is. Here we go. Mobile weapons of the field of battle. Yeah, like I said, just clearing off the notification here. There we go. Okay. Let's see what we have in the shop. Uh, like I said, I think I'm actually gonna start with my free pulls here. So. Wait, no, actually, sorry, I'm going to get my accessories first. Uh, I really like this final gesture wallpaper. I'm going to get that. I'll probably be rocking that for a little bit. And then I also wanted the new board. That looks very good, actually, I will say. All right, so there's those. Now let's start opening some of our free packs here. We'll start with the Monadium one and see, see if we get anything fun. Doesn't look like it, but it can be deceiving. Just because there's no glow doesn't mean there's no UR. Alright, well, there's nothing in that one. Let's see what is in the uh, Runic Generator one. You know, Generator is a deck that I have thought about messing with occasionally, so it is kind of cool they made this pack. And there we go, nothing in that one. Okay, now... What other accessories were there? Oh yeah, it's just uh, tell me about all this other stuff. All right, let's take a look. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. <clears throat> let's take a look at Advance of Great Forces. Cards included in this pack. Here we go. Here is the UR list, and 
let's see what we've got here. So, got a reprint of Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. That's a pretty good reprint. It's definitely needed for the Aromage and plant decks in general. It's just a very good link to. So, good reprint there. Aroma Lilith Rosemary, we already knew this was going to be a UR, which is also kind of to be expected, being the new big monster of the Aromage archetype. Uh, Repair Genix Controller, not a surprise to me that this one's a UR. Uh, this is the new Link one for the Genix deck. Um, kind of glossed over the last new card because we read it already, but I do want to read this one because this one, I remember getting, getting a lot of hype when it first came out, so... Uh, it's a Link 1 1200 attack machine, takes one level 4 lower Gen X monster. Can only special summon repair Gen X controllers once per turn. If this card is Link summoned, you can add one Gen X monster from your graveyard to your hand. Once per chain, if a Gen X monster is added to your hand, except by drawing it, you can, except during the damage step, immediately after this effect resolves. Normal summon one Gen X monster. Also, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except synchro summon using a Gen X tuner as material so i mean it's not hard to see why people thought this card was going to be good like gen x can already naturally search a pretty decent bit and then this card gives you not only well not just search but also you know when adding cards from graveyard to hand it'll give you more summons and it'll even get you kickstarted with one of those right off the bat um that said i can also understand why this deck doesn't really do that great um but uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the other new support here in a moment. Also worth noting that it's a Link 1, but the arrow doesn't point down. That actually matters quite a bit. Um, but, uh, okay, so Ragnar Reiko, we got the Stag Sovereign. We already knew that was going to be UR. Arms of Genex Return 0, we already knew was going to be a UR. Uh, same with Enlightenment Dragon. Aroma Lilith Rosalina. It's another Arrow Mage card that ended up being a UR. It's a level 1 plant tuner with 0 attack and defense, quick effect, you can discard this card and target a Roma monster you control, gain life points equal to half its attack. If this card is normal or special summon, you can special summon one non-tuner or Roma monster from your deck. Also, you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn except plant monsters. That seems like a pretty good effect. I, I have to imagine that card is pretty solid. Uh, Ancient Gear Dark Golem, we knew this was going to be a UR. Ragnarika the Evil Seed, this is pretty obvious, this one was probably going to be a UR. This is like the kind of main starter of the Ragnarika archetype. Um, it's like a double search. Well, I can just read the effect when reading all the other ones. Special summon this card from your hand by sending an insect, plant, or reptile monster from your hand to the graveyard. You only special summon one Ragnarika the Evil Seed once per turn this way. This card is normal with special summon. You can add up to two different Ragnarika cards of yours that are banished and or in your deck, except the Evil Seed, then banish one card from your hand. Also, you can't special summon except for insect, plant, and reptile. So, it's a double search and you can banish any card from your hand. Uh, it can also add back stuff that's been banished, so very, very solid card. Pretty obvious you know, card for the archetype. Lightsworn Dragonling, we definitely knew this was going to be a UR, um, but surprisingly, I don't think the, yeah, the new Synchro is only an SR. That's actually pretty cool. So, uh, Lightsworn actually remains a fairly budget deck because the only URs beforehand were Charge of Light Brigade, which is actually in this pack, which is really cool. Charge of Light Brigade, Judgment, and Punishment Dragon. So, this is the only other Lightsworn UR that Lightsworn gets. So, that's pretty cool. They kept Lightsworn a pretty budget deck. And it's also really cool they do give you Charge of the Light Brigade, the other, like, the most important UR for Lightsworn, like, in this pack as well. So, that is neat. I, I like that. Ancient Gear Statue being a UR is a little bit of a surprise, but not too much of one. Because this card is actually really, really good for Ancient Gears. Uh, it's a level 2, level 2, sprite alert, uh, 500 attack, uh, 800 defense machine. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Ancient Gear Statue once per turn this way. You can tribute this card, special summon from your hand or deck one Ancient Gear Golem or one monster that mentions it, except Ancient Gear Statue ignoring its summoning effects. And you can only use this effect of Ancient Gear Statue once per turn. So it is also a machine dupe target, but uh, you can only use the effect once per turn anyway, so it's like, yeah, how useful is that? It's also level two, so ancient gear sprite, <laughs> maybe. Um, oh, they they finally put the black goat laughs into the game, and it's a UR. I actually almost didn't see that there at the end. Uh, this is a normal trap card. This is a clear one monster card name. This turn, neither player can special summon monsters with that original name, except from the graveyard. You can banish this card from the graveyard, then declare one monster name. This turn, neither player can activate the effects of monsters on the field with that original name. You can only use one the Black Guilt Laughs effect per turn, and only once that turn. So, yeah, I've, I've seen people say every now and then that, like, oh, you know, what's, uh, you know, when is this card coming out? Because um, it's a pretty decent trap card. And it's kind of a standalone card, it's not part of any archetype, so it's, it's always hard to say when cards like this are going to come out. 
Definitely did not expect it to be a UR, but I mean, I think it is a pretty solid card, so I guess we'll see how much play it ends up seeing. Uh, I'm gonna scroll through here at Lunchung. <laughs> Why is King of the Skull Swords in this pack? That's funny. Uh, just to see if there's any other new cards that are really worth noting. Like any one offs or anything. Uh, I kind of don't see too much here, and we're down to the rares, so okay. Alright, uh, I did also want to take a look at the Aim for the Stars pack and see what's all going on here as far as URs go. So, this is again the reprint pack. Alright, so we got Borland Dragon, which is relevant because, of course, Dragon Link is now a thing again because Y Reverse is legal starting today. Well, I mean, Dragon Link was a thing before too, but you know what I mean. Uh, Sylvian, Sylvan, Dancepone, Dancepone, Dancepion. Um, I, I think this is like a one of in Plant Link, maybe. Um, I, I know that like it's not like necessarily always something that they use. I th again, I think, but um, it's an interesting UR. I feel like they could have included maybe a bit of a better UR for plants, but let's see what else they put in here. Uh, there's Strena. Strena is definitely used in Plant Link. Uh, Bestial Dissipator, another Dragon Link card. Albion's a branded card. Mirror Jade. So it looks like they were printing a lot of like bestial branded stuff as well as plant link stuff in here. Uh, we got Magnum Hut, Lubellion, Guiding Quim. Yep, branded fusions in here. Welcome Labs in here. So a couple of lab stuff too. That's that's interesting. Both Welcome Labs. Okay, and transaction rollback. And those are the URs. So uh, I mean, yeah. If if you like, uh, this is actually a pretty good pack if you want to play branded. Honestly. Um, being able to get all these, like, this is, that's probably the best, like, um, what am I trying to say? That's, like, the, 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 the most amount of, of UR slots that any one archetype is taking here is dedicated to Branded. So if you need Branded, definitely a good pack to pull from. But, uh, yeah, Branded aside, even as somebody who is, like, has a passing interest in plant stuff and does kind of need transaction rollbacks... I don't know if I'm going to be opening from this pack, just because there's so much stuff here I do already have. That is kind of an issue I run into with a lot of reprint packs, honestly. Um, is And I, I think I actually had a comment that was kind of alluding to this, and I definitely do agree with this, that like when you're somebody who like keeps up with a lot of meta decks, these reprint packs kind of lose a lot of value because there's just going to be so many repeat URs, even if there are a few that you're going for in the pack itself. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think it is important to keep the perspective of players who um, have not been playing quite as long and might have missed on some of these packs when their selection packs were first in the shop, these decks, I mean, right? So, um, I will also say Branded being as expensive of a deck as it is, it is, a, it is pretty nice that, um, again, if you need Branded, like, I would definitely pull from this pack. I think this is a, definitely a good pack in that regard. Um, and then you might incidentally get some other stuff you might want on the side there um but yeah i think for me personally uh i probably don't need to be pulling from this selection pack here so um now that i've had a little bit of a moment to think about it here oops not this one i'm gonna go back to advance of great for advance of great forces excuse me and honestly looking at it here i gotta say this one this one's gonna be a skip for me i I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think this pack is, like, inherently terrible. Like, I don't think, like, all three of these decks or all four, how many of archetypes are in here. I don't think all these decks are, like, awful. But, and I kind of already alluded to this in my, um, what is it, in my uh, This Week in Master Duel video, the news segment, where I did say I was probably going to end up skipping out on this pack. And I think I am going to kind of hold true to that. Um, again, like... While these archetypes are cool, and I, there is a part of me that actually does kind of want to dabble in Gen X just because I do love the uh, the Gen X controller and the whole archetype so much, but um, I really don't see any one of these archetypes getting better than like mid rogue at best. Uh, I, I don't know, Light Sword variants, I will say. There are also a number of people in that comment section that are very up on White Sworn, and I do think it does have the highest potential 
of all of these uh you know, archetypes that are in this pack. Namely, uh, there were people pointing out that Tier Limit with Light Sworn is definitely a big possibility because this is the first format where we've had Light Sworn Dragonling legal in the same format as Tier Limit's Kikolo. So um, I can definitely see some potential synergies there. We'll have to see if anything cool uh, ends up coming of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a pure standpoint, I kind of have a bit of a time seeing Light Sworn like really getting there again past the mid rogue level. And again, I think that applies to pretty much all of these archetypes. Actually, I will say for the Aromage stuff, I don't know how much of it you would actually use in Plant Link. Uh, I don't think you end up using these URs, but uh, if you do, that would probably be uh, the most like meta relevant play. Unless again, Light Sworn ends up taking it off, which I can see a order that happens too. So, um,. Overall, again, if you're kind of only looking for meta relevant decks, I think this pack is a skip. However, I am still going to talk about how many copies of each card uh, I think you should be going for if you're going for, you know, opening this pack in general and you want any of these archetypes. So for Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, uh, I think pretty sure you play two in Plant Link. So if you don't own any of these and you want them, definitely pull for at least two. The Aroma Lilith Rosemary, uh, I imagine that you. For a, a pure Aeromage deck, you'd play, of course, at least one. You might play a second one, although to be fair, the Link 3s, you might not have enough room in the extra deck to, plus in your combo lines, to go into a Link 3 like that often. But, I mean, this is obviously quite a good card for the Aeromage archetype, so I would say at least one, maybe two. Uh, for a Paragenics controller, you'd probably want two of these, right? Because it's kind of like your Link 1. It's like your main engine for the deck, so uh, if you're building a Genix deck, I'd say craft two of these. Uh, Ragnarika Stag Sovereign. You probably only need one of these. I can't imagine needing more than one uh, as you're the top of your your combo line, your boss finisher for the Ragnarika deck. Uh, Arms of Genex Return Zero um, is actually not a bad synchro monster at all for the Genex deck. Uh, it's really more the Genex main deck is still kind of lacking. Um, that said, I'd probably only play one of this if we were playing it in a Genex deck. Enlightenment Dragon. Definitely only need one of these. Uh, this card, I think, has a decent bit of potential in Light Sworn, but I will say the thing that's holding it back the most is not even the fact that you have to play both Judgment and Punishment Dragon, but the fact that one has to be on the field in order to summon this, right? You have to banish the above monsters one from your field and grave, not from your field or grave. It has to be one from each. So if this was like Phantom of Ubel and you could just summon it by putting uh, banishing both in the grave, uh, this card would be cracked and it'd be a lot more up on Light Sworn. But um, having to have one of them on the field again is, is a little bit little bit much of a requirement, but still a good card. Uh, if you're building if you're building pure Light Sworn, definitely craft one of these, I think. Aeromalilith Rosalina. Um, I, I imagine for an Aeromage deck, you just always play three. This is kind of the big one alongside the Link three, where like, I don't know if Plant Link would actually want this, but for uh, an Aeromage deck, yeah, I think three would definitely probably be good, at least two. Uh, Ancient Gear Dark Golem, I think it's another two to three for the Ancient Gear decks. It's very, very solid. It's pretty much a straight up better Ancient Gear Golem. Um, it's not straight as Ancient Gear Golem in the deck though, which I, in uh, the hand, which I think can matter. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this is just like a strictly better Ancient Gear Golem for the deck. So I'd play at least two probably of this, if not three. Uh, Ragnarika the Evil Seed, you always play three of this in a Ragnarika deck, it's your starter, it makes your deck highly consistent, uh, Double Search is quite good for the deck, so. Uh, Lightsworn Dragonling, this I can see actually only playing two in certain builds if you're using Lightsworn as more of, a, of an engine, right? But, uh, I'll say three, like two to three, but three for like any dedicated Lightsworn build for sure. But again, I could see doing two, or maybe even only one if you're only using Lightsworn as an engine. Uh, Ancient Gear Statue is an easy three of, in my opinion, in the Ancient Gear deck. Again, um, it's a huge consistency booster. It lets you go straight into uh, your stuff directly from the deck, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Charge of Light Brigade, this is the other reprint, but this is definitely a three of for a dedicated Lightsworn deck. Much like the Dragon Link, if you're only using Lightsworn as an engine, then I could definitely see getting away with only two copies, maybe even only one. Um, but that would have to be a pretty light engine, because even if you are only using Lightsworn as an engine, uh, one of the most important parts of an engine is consistency, and Charge of Light Brigade is your consistency card. Um, so I would say if you're planning on running a significant, significant being like, eh, probably like more than three or four uh, Lightsworn monsters, you should probably be rocking a place out of Charge of Light Brigade for most decks. 
And finally, the Black Goat laughs. Um, I mean, so while I did say this card was good, I don't really expect it to see play in, like, general, just generic decks. Uh, Lab might pick this up as a trick. Back row decks in general might pick this up as a trick. But, uh, like, Paleo, for example, might end up teching this card. Um, but outside of dedicated trap decks like Lab, Paleo, uh, I, I have a hard time seeing this uh, see play in, like, you know, general deck so i'd say like zero again maybe one if you want to tech in some trap based decks so zero to one all right so that's kind of my review of the new selection pack and let's see is there anything else in the update that we need to explore here i kind of don't think there is uh, i think we have actually ended up covering everything yeah, there's new accessories again but all right, so yeah, I, I know a lot of people really like to see me actually open the packs, but I think for now I'm just gonna hold on to, well, <laughs> I say I'm gonna hold on to my gems, but really what I think I personally am gonna do is I'm going to continue going after some alt art cards while they're still in the shop. So uh, I'd like an alt art Winda to play in tier limit, and if possible, I kinda wanna pull two more alt art tunings, but um, I don't know exactly how many of each pack I'm gonna pull yet so I think I might save that for another time but yeah that's my review of the new updates so we got some pretty cool accessories uh the new selection pack is kind of again I'm personally gonna skip it but I don't think the archetypes are necessarily horrible uh the reprint selection pack is really good if you want branded especially if you want branded I would definitely pull from that pack if you don't own any of the cards yet but uh, as always the usefulness of that reprint pack is going to depend on what you already do or don't own and the new secret packs are both very cool, both very deserved for Runic Generator as well as Monodium. So uh, that'll end up doing it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Let's go ahead and just move now to our outro. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested in, you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world so thank you each and every one of you uh, for now this is Hexlex I'm gonna be signing out but more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.